Hello everyone and thank you for meeting me at the table. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of Legends of Andor Eternal Frost. This was given to us as a review copy by Cosmos Games, so thank you very much for that Cosmos. I'm going to be doing a playthrough of Quest 2. I did do a practice play of Quest 1, but it actually uses the other side of the board. The rest of them I believe are on this side, so I thought it'd be better to show Quest 2. I have not played this quest before, so if I do make any errors and I miss them in editing, please let me know and I will put them in the Klingon subtitles so you'll see them as you're watching the video. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into setup and start our playthrough. And I'm so excited to be on this channel. Fun that this is our first game we're going to play here at Meet Me at the Table. All right, let's jump in. To start setting up our game, we grabbed all of the cards here that have the two on it for the Eternal Frost quest. This will tell us all the cards we need. There's 18 total, between A1 and A5, then B, C, D, E, G, N, and then a bunch of additional cards. I have all of those. Let's reveal A1. Here we have some of our reminders for Legend 2. A hero always chooses between two options, either move or fight. Both cost a time on the time track. Fighting costs one hour per battle round. Moving costs one hour per game board space. If the hero cannot or does not want to move or fight, they can pass, but that still also costs an hour. We have free actions of activating snow tokens, making a fire, picking up or depositing items from or onto a space, trade or give articles with another hero or a location on the same space, and then use articles. None of these actions cost any hours on the time, uh, time track. They can also be carried out when it isn't the hero's turn. A hero cannot perform them, however, if they've already ended their day. Moving to Legend Card A2, it says start by carrying out the instructions on the checklist card. So I have my checklist card here. I'll flip this over. We need to place the game board on the table with the side showing the big lake. We've already done that. Each player chooses a hero board with the corresponding hero figure and gets two wooden discs, one wooden cube, and the dice that correspond to their color. We each also place one of our wooden discs in the sunrise box. Let's take a look at the two heroes we're going to play with. Our first one is Cram. He's a dwarf from the Deep Mines. Cram gets one additional strength point whenever they receive a reward for defeating a creature. We'll start with strength of one. We'll start with willpower of seven. You can see it's underlined. That's why it's there. And we have a total of three yellow dice. We'll set these aside. Those are what we can roll in battle up to those three dice. Our other hero will be Tanaya. She is a fire guardian. Tanaya can use the firewood item to place a fire token directly on their hero board. So we actually can put them right here. You can see there's a spot for them. A fire in Tanaya's hands works exactly like one that is on the game board. We'll talk about fires that is something new for the Legends of Andor series. So uh, we haven't seen fires before. They're kind of cool how they work. It makes sense because we're in a very cold area that we'd want to be making fires. We'll place this at one, this at seven for her. She also can have up to three green dice. We have a sunrise box up here. We've placed one of each of our player tokens there to denote we are in the sunrise box. And as we use ours in the day, we will move up on the track accordingly. Next, we lay out all the figures next to the game board. We get the red and black dice ready. That's these ones that we may be using for the enemies, hopefully not the black ones. We then need to mix the 24 snow tokens that are these, and I've placed them randomly out on the board already. We'll also do the same thing with the 13 ice tokens that are these tokens, and they're placed around the lake. You can actually walk into the lake, but you have to end your movement in the lake. And after you go to that spot and you reveal the token there, and you have to reveal the token, no one can walk into that space again. Kind of cool. It's like we've cracked the ice so we can't go into that space again. We need to place one fire tile with its extinguished side up on space 431 and 446, and one fire uh, token on flame side up on space 401. There are three fire tokens here, here, and one way over into that village. You can see the one in the village is flipped face up. These ones are flipped face down. We can spend two willpower points to make them active. We'll talk about what fires do shortly. Just so you can see the snow tokens and the ice tokens are also out on the board. After setting up the fire tiles, we need to place one of the items shown on each of the two merchant spaces, 422 and 445, on them. What's interesting about the merchant locations, unlike previous uh, scenarios or previous games of Legends of Andor, there's no coins. What instead you're going to be doing is trading items. I can trade an item to pick up an item in that marketplace. So a marketplace can have a specific item and we actually get to choose uh, which market has which items. I'll show you that to show that to you in a second. 
will place the Eternal Frost token on the space on the day track that corresponds to your number of players. For example, in this merchant space, we could have a falcon, we could have a helm, we could have a telescope, or we could have a wineskin. I've decided to have a wineskin here that we could potentially gain, so I've set that in that space. The one way up here, we could have an Askamar blade, which sounds awesome, that lets you reroll dice, but I decided not to put that there. I decided to put the telescope there, so you could potentially gain the telescope from Space 422. We have the Eternal Frost token up here based on the player count. I'm playing with two, so I'm putting it here. What's different with this uh, box is that each round, this is going to start moving up, and it's going to start taking away days or hours from us within a day because it's so cold. It's really annoying. <laughs> uh, so that is something that's different from the other Legends of Andors. To finish up our checklist, we just need to place the Narrator token on the A space of our time track. We've completed our checklist. Now we need to move down all of these, which is great. Place the six legend cards. Those are all the different names. I'm just sending them to the side. We're also going to set aside the articles legend card. This one just tells us what all the different articles do, which we'll look at as it becomes important to us. We're going to place the red X on the pink symbol on the sunrise uh, token to the right of the horned troll, you'll see that. And then I've already placed stars on the time track for B, C, D, E, G, and N, because when we move to those locations, we need to read a card from this stack. Here we have the X token on this spot in the sunrise box. And we have a star on all those different locations on the time track. The hammer blows rang out from the depths of the mine. The shield dwarves had tried everything, but so far the winter stone had resisted all attempts to destroy it. But the dwarves were persistent and did not give up. Meanwhile, Rekka, the witch of Andor, tried to banish the ice sleep with one of her potions, but she soon gave up her efforts. I can't stop the advancing cold, but maybe the herbs from the steep county east of the mountains could help. They are very potent. Yes, perhaps there is hope for healing there, in the land of the steep. And so the hero set off, with the continuing assistance of the barbarian warrior, warrior Trenuk. That's going to be him. We'll learn about him more in a second. Trenuk himself from the steep, they found the narrow mountain pass leading east. After a few days of arduous travel, the heroes reached the other side of the mountains, but their breath caught when they saw what lies ahead. So basically, we're trying to destroy this um, winter orb, something that is making it eternally cold here, and we can't figure out how to do it. So that's what we're trying to do, is we're figuring out how to get rid of that orb. We'll now place our two hero figures with the highest ranks on space 428. If there are other heroes in play, their figures are placed on 427. So we'll both be on 428, since there's only two of us. Also, place the figure of the barbarian warrior, Trenuk, on space 438. A dazzling white landscape stretched as far as the eye could see. Fields, steppes, hills, and valleys, everything was buried under a thick layer of snow. Peculiarities of the steep game board, or step. I can I don't know how to say that. <laughs> we have a large cave. A hero can only enter that space, uh, which is space 414, if you have a total of 14 willpower points. Wow. Then, this is the ice tokens on the lake. A hero stepping on an ice token must stop moving and reveal and execute the token. The token is then removed from the game. The hero can leave the space next time it is their turn, but from now on, that ice is so thin that no one can step in that space. Heroes standing on a space with a merchant, that's 422 and 445, we saw those before, can place articles from their hero board onto that space and take the same number of articles from that space. This is a free action option and does not cost hours on the time track. However, this cannot be done in passing, so you have to actually stop and end your movement there. Trading only applies to articles that are on the small and large storage spaces of the hero boards. Gems and herbs do not count. They can't be traded. Articles that are on a merchant space may never simply be taken. We have to exchange. That's what's important there. I have already placed a gore on space 449 and a warger on space 452. Trunuk stared into the distance. See, my country has also succumbed to the eternal frost. I must go to my tribe's tent city immediately. I must see how my friends and relatives are doing. Do you want to accompany me? Note, Trenuk's horse is too heavy for the frozen lake and may not enter lake spaces. Oh, that's important to know. Let's see how quickly I forget it. <laughs> we have two tasks right now. Task one, at least one hero must be in the tent city, so space 401, together with Trenuk. 
At this point, they may read aloud the card the shaman won. This must be done before the narrator reaches the letter B. So, AK, we gotta do it soon, uh, or we lose. It was settled. One of the heroes would accompany Tranuk, but the search for the rare herbs was their most important task. Rekka spoke of the red blood herb, white wart roots, blueberries, and black night thorns. So our second task is there are several herbs hidden among the snow tokens. The group of heroes must uh, own one of each of the four colors. Here we have our four colors, red blood, white wart, blue, and black night thorns. Each hero starts with seven willpower points and two strength points. Ah, so we each start with two. So I'll start them at two instead of one. The group gets two additional strength points and two wineskins. You all decide together who gets uh, everything. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to put, I'm going to have Cram gain three. So he's total of three strength. And we're going to have Tanaya also have three strength. And we're each going to hold a flask. Now, what do flasks do? When a hero chooses the move action, they can move one space on each side of the wineskin without costing an hour on the time track. So you can drink from that wineskin, and it's like you don't spend a time when you move. This states the hero with the lowest rank starts. Our two heroes are over in this spot 428. Trinook, the barbarian, is here. We've got our two enemies over here. This is a gore. And these guys, I can never remember their name. The war gores are over here in spot 452. So we have to traverse all the way over to those tents way up there. And we need to get Trinook there. Now, how do we get Trinook there? You can spend one hour of your time to have him move four spaces across the board. Our lowest ranking hero is Cram. So it is Cram's turn. Cram can decide either he wants to move or fight. We're going to have him start moving because why not? <laughs> so I think... Because we need to find uh, some of these tokens, they're likely, or I should say herbs, they're likely underneath these snow tokens or maybe these ice tokens. We're going to have him move somewhat slowly. Uh, I'm thinking, let me count out these spaces. Any which way I count this, it looks like it's going to take me nine time to get from here all the way over to the camp. So what I think I'm going to do is have our uh, uh, cram here spend one time to spend the time you'll move up your token on the track the amount of time you're taking which is one for him i'm going to have him move one space into this 432 space i'm going to end his movement because he ended his movement there i can reveal this snow token and we have oh that is a new type of snow token that's new for this game these are called storm tokens what happens with these is all heroes are pushed when you see these arrows, one space down the arrows from wherever they are. So we're actually going to get pushed to this space, but that also means that Tanaya is going to be pushed into this 429 space as well. I don't believe it impacts any of our companions, so I'm not going to move Tanook, but both of us got pushed from that storm. And that was it. That was his turn. The turns are very easy in this game. You either move or fight, and then you can reveal things, do anything like that that you want. So we spent one time, we move there, that'll end our movement, let's now move to Tanaya. Tanaya will spend three time, and she's going to move Tanook 12 spaces. Three times four is 12. Tanook will move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and he gets to right where he needs to be with his clan. Now we still need to get a cram over there to complete that first task. Since Tanaya was pushed to this space, we might as well reveal this snow token. Oh, and we're going to get shoved again. Another storm. So we get pushed to this space. And you can see Cram. Cram is going to get shoved to this space. Cram will spend another hour moving one space. Should we check out an ice token? Why not? We'll move here. End our movement here. We have to because it's an ice space. We'll flip this over. Oh, we just found something. That is an Askamar blade. So he will attach this, and the hero, after rolling dice in combat, may reroll one of their dice. That is not too shabby. We'll place that right here in his arms. Tanaya is just going to do some searching, looking for hopefully some wood. She really wants to make a fire for herself because she can carry around that fire. Ooh, let me explain fire to you. So, how fire works. If you're in a space with fire, 
it gives you plus one strength while attacking. Not to mention, at the end of the round, everyone that's in a space with fire gets plus five will points. And if she has fire with her, that will always happen. You do have to spend two will power points and wood in order to create a fire. Or if there was a fire there previously and the tokens just flipped over, you can just spend two will power points to get it going again. Uh, so that's why it'll be awesome if she can get a fire going. She can essentially spend two will power points to get plus one strength during combat and a net of three more will power points at the end of the round. With that one move, let's move here and we'll flip this one over. Oh, she gets plus one strength. So far, not sad about these. That will move her up to four total strength instead of three. When we get to combat, you'll see why strength is so important. This is auto amounts of attack value. You're going to roll your dice and add that value up between your strength points and your dice. So the more strength you have, the more consistent you'll be in combat. Cram is going to continue to move along the ice, spending one hour, and he will move to this space, and he gets, yeah, usually there's bad ones in here too, that's minus two willpower. You'll want to think of willpower kind of like your health. Uh, if it ever goes down to zero, you actually decrease your strength by one and then go back up to three willpower points. But also, dependent upon where you are on your willpower, that will tell you how many dice you get to roll in combat. So if we're doing better on willpower, we'll roll more dice, two or three. You only ever get to take one of the dice that you roll, but let's say you roll a five or a six on one of them and a one on the other. Uh, when you're at the two, you could choose the six to get more damage. So you want to have higher willpower for more likely hoods of getting higher values but you never know you could roll one die and get a six and you'd be just fine even at the lowest willpower area Tanaya will spend one more time and she'll go ahead and move into this space revealing this token oh that's one of the herbs Tanaya now has a blueberry herb remember we need to get one of each type she could at any time discard this to gain two willpower points but we will not be discarding that because that is what our goal is uh, or one of our tasks, I should say, is to get one of each type. Cram will continue to be risky, spending the time moving to this ice space. And, oh, we all get pushed on the, um, the storm track. Now, here's the deal. In the ice, there are no arrows, so we don't get shoved. But Tanaya will. She'll get pushed into this space, which is fine by us. We'll spend another time going up to six for Tanaya. And we'll reveal this snow token. And this one also minus two willpower points. That moves us from seven to five willpower. Don't love that. Cram will continue his dangerous journey along the ice. He'll move to space 459. Oh, he gets another wineskin. He can have three articles. He now has two wineskins. <laughs> I know that there's some good things in these and some pretty bad ones, but so far I'm okay with that. We're back to Tanaya. She will use one more time to move to seven. Now I do want to show you, see how those spaces eight, nine, and 10, they're orange and they've got a minus two willpower. We can, when we choose to go next for Tanaya, we can choose if we want to just rest for the rest of the day, we can be done. Or we can continue to press on using those three additional time. But each additional time that we use, we get minus two willpower. Think of us going and exploring later at night or we have to eat later. We don't eat as much because we're exploring. So that's what that's denoting there. I'm really hoping she can find some wood. <laughs> uh, and no, instead she finds a tablet. We have the Tablets of the Three Brothers. The tablets are very powerful. If a hero has all three on their hero board, you may read the Tale of the Three Brothers card. Ooh. I secretly wish this was wood, but it's not. <laughs> it's this tablet, which could be really cool. Right now it does nothing. She just has it in her inventory. Cram will activate yet again, moving into this 458 spot. Minus three willpower. Boy, that really hurts. We were only at five to begin with, so this is going to put us down to two. Tanaya doesn't see a need to use extra hours this time, so she is going to rest for the rest of the day. She will be placed into the sunrise box here, so that means she will go first next time because she's the one who ended her turn first. We'll do Cram next. Cram is going to use one side of one of the wineskins he has, so he can move for one space for free. Plus, he will use the second time he has here, so he can move one, two, and move himself into the tented area with Trinook. This will now complete task one. We get to reveal the card, the Shaman One. 
Trinok and one of the heroes arrived at the tent city of Yato, the largest of the three tribes. There was a large campfire burning. Here and there, the newcomers caught curious glances from inside the tents. As they entered the largest tent, the Eldar greeted them with a toothless smile. Then she spoke, You are welcome. I am the elder and shaman of the Yato. I am Elin. The cold got the better of us. Many of us are frozen, alive and yet frozen. We have run out of herbs for our potions and powders because of the wild creatures of the steppe are attacking us. They too fall prey to the cold, except for brave Orneha, my granddaughter. No one dares to leave the tent city. We have a little herbo herbology. A hero can use an herb on their hero board as a free action option. They can receive two willpower points and then put the token back into the supply. We won't be doing that. We also have to remember that we cannot exchange them for articles. Now continue to lend in card two. The shaman addressed the hero again. Can you fend off the creatures that are threatening to overtake our tent city? And can you help us find the herbs? We have another goal. The legend is won when the narrator reaches letter N on the legend's track and the tent city has been successfully defended and our herb of each of the four colors is on the tent city. Once this is done, we'll immediately jump to N. Similar to the other Legends of Andor games, we can allow a certain amount of monsters based upon the player count get into the city. So because we're playing it two player, we can have up to three monsters enter the tent city and we're okay. If we allow a fourth one to go in, we lose. And we have to protect that on top of doing everything else. And what's interesting about this game is every time you defeat an enemy, it also progresses the narrator track up one. So generally speaking, your goal is not to defeat all the enemies because if you do, you're going to run out of time. Because Tanaya has claimed end of round for herself, we're back to Cram's turn. He's going to also claim end of round. No reason to spend additional hours. I don't even know what I'm doing. And I really want to have the a benefit of having this fire here. So now we're going to walk through the sunrise box and then move to the next round. The sunrise box provides us with how the monsters will activate. We'll start with the gores. So we have one gore on the board we're going to move. Then we have the war gore. We don't have any of these, which I can't remember the name of those. Then the war gore is going to activate again. Then we have the big troll guys. Then we're ignoring this. Then we have the fire. Anybody in a fire space gains plus five willpower points. And then we move the eternal frost token one space to the left. Then we extinguish all of our fires. And then we'll move up the narrator track. So let's do it. We currently have a gore here in 449, the space 449. We will move it up one with these arrows. Now, if there had been a monster in this 446 spot, we'd actually jump over it. Each space can only hold one monster, and monsters almost never initiate combat unless they're a special monster that they say so. We can move through that space no problem. We have to be the ones to initiate combat against monsters. It is important to note that only one monster can be in each space at a time. Next, this war gore is going to activate once, and then, because they're a lot faster than gores, they actually activate twice during each sunrise step, so it will move again to here. Because there is a fire in the space with Cram, he'll gain five willpower points going from two to seven. Thank goodness. Then we'll move this eternal frost token one to the left, so it's still not bothering us yet. Next round, though, it'll start taking away space 10. We won't be able to use that. Then we'll simply extinguish this fire, and then finally, we will move up the narrator uh, token. This will move our narrator token to space B, which means now we'll read the uh, legends card that denotes or has the letter B on it. If you have not read the shaman one card, you just fail. We did read that, so we'll keep moving forward. Read on. In the distance, the heroes recognize moving silhouettes. Gores and war gores? Yes, these wild creatures seem to live here too. There are also other beings, large buffalo-like creatures. They were all obviously drawn towards the tent city. Of course they are. <laughs> we're going to place new gores on spaces 411 and 412, a war gore on space 451, and a step buffalo on 448 and 447. Jeez, that's a lot of enemies. Some of these beasts may have been distracted by the natural riches of the steppe country. You can also find gems in the snow. A hero may place a gem on their hero board, 
uh, just like the herbs. As the game progresses, they can place gems on spaces that uh, they're standing on. This cannot be done in passing, so you have to end your movement there. If a creature has a gem next to it, it does not walk along the arrow at sunrise, but instead moves into the gem's space. The gem is then immediately removed from the game. So we can slow them down that way. Also, not only just killing them, because remember when, I, when we kill them, <laughs> it's going to move up the narrator track, so we don't love killing them. Uh, if this is one of the ways that we can prevent them from moving towards the tent city. Well, we now have our work cut out for us. We've got two gores over here. We have that gore over here, two war gores over here, and the buffaloes over here. And these buffalo and the war gores are all going to be jumping over each other, rushing towards uh, this wonderful tent city. To start this next round, Tanaya is just going to use one of her time. She's going to move into this space. What's important to know is that these blasted gores, they're both moving into the same space, so that means they're actually going to jump over one another. So I feel like it might be a good idea to take one of them out, but I don't think she can do that without some help of some fire. So I'm really looking for some wood. Uh, and no, instead we have yet another storm that's simply going to push her into this space. Now I'm realizing, I think, based on how I'm reading the rules, it's a free action to look at those. So since she got pushed, oh, and I should mention, uh, Cram doesn't get pushed at all because he's already in the tent space and that space doesn't have an arrow pointing out of it. So I do think she can reveal this one as well. Oh, that is wood. We found our first wood. When you gain a wood, you'll place it here. She is then immediately going to give up two more willpower points. It puts her down to three. Ugh. But that means she now will have a fire in her hand, thanks to her ability. Normally, we'd put that in her space. So now the nice thing is, is anytime she has a combat, she gets plus one strength. We won't put it as permanent. We'll just use it for combat only. Uh, and at the end of the round where this is ready, she'll gain five willpower. Then she can just spend two to get it ready again next round. Super worth it. That's exactly what I was looking for. Cram will also use one hour. He's going to simply move into this space and reveal it. And it is another storm. So that means I think we just get pushed back into our space. Yes, we do. And Tanaya is going to get pushed right into this space. So with that, I do think Tanaya then will simply spend an hour and we're going to do our first combat. We're going to fight the gore that's in the same space as her. We can see the gore has a total of two strength. If we defeat it, we'll gain two willpower points. If we defeat a war uh, gore, we can either gain four willpower points or strength. And if we defeat one of those um, buffaloes, we get six willpower points or plus two strength. So... How do we know where to put the willpower of the monster? Well, we look at the picture. Boom. We know he has four willpower, which is essentially his health. He's going to roll, because he's red, two red dice. No black, thank goodness. So we'll roll two red dice for him. He's going to add his strength of two. He'll take the better of these two dice. Now, unfortunately for us, uh, where I'm, I'm realizing... Because we spent so much willpower being able to do all the actions last time, we only get to roll one die. And we don't have any abilities to affect that. It is what it is, though. We're going to use our one die and roll it up. We do have a strength of four plus the fire that's in our hand, so our strength is going to be five. We're going to add five to this roll, and we have five plus a five. That's ten. Oh, that's awesome. Now we're going to roll two red dice for the gore, but he's only going to take one of these unless they're doubles. If they're doubles, then we're going to add both of them together. And he gets a one and a six. Bummer. So six plus the two is eight. We have five plus five is ten. We dealt him two damage. That's good, but that's not enough to kill him. So we're going to spend another hour to fight him again because the moment we stop fighting him, he heals back to full. We'll move our marker up to three. And let's try this again. So we'll roll, and we get a 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. We're at 11 compared to a 2 and a 2. That's 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. Oh, I have this on the wrong one. There we go. Maybe I hit it. 4 plus 2 is 6. We're at 11. That is more than enough to defeat that gore. So that gore will be removed from the board. We gain 2 willpower points. Thank you, green dice. <laughs> we'll go up to five. Still not far enough to get a total of two dice for combat. 
One of the most unique aspects of this game, though, is every time you defeat an enemy, you're going to push up the narrator track by one space. We're going to have to reveal card C. No doubt, the Yatoi Tent City was the target of the dark creatures they all sensed life. But strangely enough, some of them were drawn to the large rock cave. What was it that they thought they would find there? The heroes should investigate this mystery. Before the narrator uh, track or the narrator token reaches letter G on the Legends track, one of the heroes must end their movement on the cave space 414. Uh, we need to have a total of 14 willpower. That's, yeah. Thus activating the card a hero in the cave 1. We can mark that location with a star to remind ourselves. And hey, why not add some more gores? 424 and 429. 14 willpower is no joke. I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do that. <laughs> uh, and we have a gore here and a gore here. Now, what's interesting is I was looking at these arrows. These gores are all going to go towards that um, actual location where we're trying to go to. I think that's kind of interesting how they did that. That's cool. So right now, I don't really know what's bad about them going there. I'm sure later on it will be a bad thing. But for now, I can leave those alone. Uh, while I deal with the other threats, because now it's going to be back to Cram, and Cram needs to, to decide how important it is to take out some of the enemies over here. If we look over here at the end of the round, this gore will move here, the war gore will move next, moving here, and then we're going to have this buffalo jumping both, moving here, and then this war gore is going to activate again, jumping both of those. So we have a few enemies we probably need to take care of there. Uh, but our strength is pretty weak. We're only at a three for our strength. I think we'll start by spending two time and moving into this space. And let's see what we find here. Oh, we found a gem. We can potentially use one of those gems. So I'll place this on his board to convince the monsters to go on a different path. Hmm, that's interesting. We're back to Tanaya's turn and I really wish I knew what to do with her. I don't know the easiest way to increase your willpower other than waiting till the end of the round. G is going to come really quick if we defeat more enemies. So I I think I'm just going to have her keep exploring these snow tiles. So we'll spend one time and we're going to move into the space of the gore. Now remember, we can ignore the gore. The gore does not attack us. It's not going to do anything to us. We'll move in there and we'll flip this over. Oh, we found another one. That one is called the Red Blood Herb. So that's the second one. Remember, we need a total of four. We have two of them. Cram will then use one time. He'll move into this ice location, flipping this over, plus one strength. That was definitely worth it, putting us to four. Tanaya will sneak up to five. Let's have her go to this location where she was before. And that's plus one strength for her. Now when she fights, she will be at a total of six strength. Cram will continue to spend one time moving into this ice location. I'm just walking through all this ice. And we got another plus one strength. I forgot how many good ones there are in here. That will move Cram up to five strength as well. We need to find two more herbs and roots, so we might as well keep exploring. Tanaya will move here. We'll flip this over. Oh, is that one? That is. That's the white wart. So we found three out of the four of these now. Cram will then also use one time. He'll move in where this war gore is. Now, if he wants to fight that war gore, he has to wait till his next turn to do that. Uh, he's going to flip this over and gain a second gem. Oh, we could play around with two gems. This is cool. You know, the snow tokens seem not nearly as bad as the fog tokens, I feel like. <laughs> Tanaya will then use two of her time. So she's going to go one overtime, one, two, which will hit her willpower by two. But she's going to move Trinook by four times two, so eight spaces. Don't you just love my math? <laughs> Trinook is going to help Cram. He's going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, moving into this space. You can see that plus two there. When he's in your space, he adds plus two to our total strength whenever we're fighting. This means Cram can use his final normal hour to go ahead and attack this Wargore. The Wargore will also have two strength. The only catch is it has a total of six willpower. Uh, because it's in this row, we can see it rolls two red dice. Cram is currently at seven willpower, just enough so he can roll two dice. And don't forget, we get to re-roll one of our dice if we'd like. Also, if we roll doubles, unless we have the helm, those doubles do nothing. We just choose one of the dice. 
but for the enemies, doubles still counts. Right now, we're at a strength of 5 plus 2, which is 7. And we'll roll these up, and we have a 4, so that's 11. 7 plus 4 is 11. We will then compare that to, we'll roll these up. Okay, we have a 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. That means we just barely did not defeat him. It's going down to a 1. Oh, I should have re-rolled. Can I re-roll my 3? Let's see, if I can roll a 5 or a 6, I'd take him out. And I rolled a 4, so it wouldn't matter. Okay, so we have to spend another time, otherwise he'll heal to full, and I think we're going to. This will, though, push us down to only rolling one die, which is not what I wanted. We spent the two willpower because, of course, we're moving to one hour uh, overtime here. We'll roll up our single die. We got a one. Let's re-roll that pile of junk. And we got a four. Okay, four plus uh, five is nine, plus two more is 11. We're at 11, and they're going to roll ooh, a six or a three. So it's a six plus two is eight. We still beat it by three. That will take him down. Now we have a conundrum. We could gain four willpower points. That would really help us and could potentially help us with the tunnel. But uh, I, his ability for cram, it says, I gain one additional strength point whenever they get a reward for defeating a creature. So I think I've got to go plus two strength points for him. So I'm going to gain two instead of one. That might bite me in the butt later, but it is what it is. We'll go to seven. We'll also place this Wargore here, and that means we push this up already to D. We have roll a red die and read out loud what happens next. So we'll roll this. We have a six, and it states, For a moment, the snowstorm eased. Sunlight glittered on the Great Lake and afforded a glimpse of its icy depths. You may now uncover any two ice tiles on the large lake and leave them face up. They're not activated. Let's look at the two farthest away, shall we? Ooh, a minus three and a snowstorm. Hmm, great, we can ignore both of those. It's Tanaya's turn, and I think she's chosen simply to rest for the day. And same with we have for Cram. That means we now have to do all the movements of the gores, the war gourds, the buffaloes, etc. Whenever you have more than one monster of the same type on the board, you start with the lowest number and then go up. 424 is the lowest number, so this gore is going to move to here. Then we have 429, it's going to move to here. Finally, we have the gore in 446, moving up one. Now we have to do the war gore. There's only one war gore out. It will move right here. Then we move to the buffalo. There are two buffalo out, 448 and 447, so 447 goes here. 448 tries to go to 447, there's already a monster there. Then tries to go to 444, there's already a monster there. Can you see this? 443, just right there. Beautiful, you can barely see it, but that is where that blasted buffalo went to. And don't worry, it gets even better, because this war gore will activate, jumping, 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 going all the way to here. We're literally in the conga line, straight to the tents. Next, all heroes with a fire in their space gains five total willpower points, so we'll go to eight. And then just because I'm sitting here, so normally you do this at the beginning of your next turn, but I'm going to do it so I don't forget. I'm going to pay the two willpower points so I don't have to extinguish this, because normally it'd be extinguished. I have to spend two willpower points to ready it. I'm just paying them now. The Eternal Frost token will now move here, and we no longer can use the tenth hour of the day. The farthest we can go is nine. And finally, we'll move up the narration marker. We're now at E. There is another legend card for E. We need to place gores on space 413 and 415. General movement rule. If there's already a creature on one of the spaces, I think we've already known that, you can now move Trinook to any hero for free. What? I can do that right now? Dang. He's already with Cram. I want to keep him with Cram. Yeah, because I might try and take a buffalo out. If I take a buffalo out, I can handle the rest of the things coming in, and we could get three additional strength. Trinook spoke to one of the heroes. Unfortunately, I don't know much about herbs. Orinha, the shaman's granddaughter, knows all about them. She too was looking for the Black Knight's Thorn, the rarest of herbs. That's the one we're missing. It has been a long time, but she has last been seen wandering westwards. Maybe that will lead us to the Night Thorns. Place a target marker face down on space 436, and 432, and 424. Huh. When a hero ends their movement on one of those spaces, they may reveal the target token. If it shows a green check mark, all target markers are removed from play, and you may reveal the uh, On Orena's Trail card. Important target markers cannot be activated with the telescope, so you can't reveal them with the telescope. 
Here we have the three target tokens and the two gores that spawned. Uh, this means we've got a lot of work cut out for us run around like crazy. <laughs> Maybe it's, I'm really bummed that I didn't put the wine skin up there for Tanaya. Uh, right now, Cram has the most wine skins, but I do feel like he needs to take out one of these enemies. Hmm. We'll start that next round with Tanaya, and I have to make a choice here. I could go up to here, but that's going to take me almost the whole day to get there. Or I can hope it's one of these two. Go to this one. If it's not this one, we're only two away to that one. Do I take the chance? It's a two out of three. I think I'm going to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one, two. Remember, I can't step on this ice. Three, four, five, six to move here. But I'm only going to spend four hours. I can do this because I'm going to use my wine skin. Each time you use a wine skin, it gives you one movement for free. So I've used both of those for the two movement. Now I have to hope that this is a check mark and it's not. Okay, this is not a check mark. So I can get to the other one for sure. If that's not a check mark, we're in some severe pain. <laughs> I've got an idea with Cram. We'll see if this is worth it. We're going to use a wine skin so we can move one space for free. We're going to move to this space and then we're going to spend two willpower points to uh, put our flame on here. And I think we're going to spend one additional movement, so one time, to be able to move Trinook with us into this space. That was just one time. Okay, now, I can't believe I'm doing this, but Tanaya is going to spend four time. One, two, three, four. She's going to have to spend two willpower points for this. She's essentially going to be done for the round, but we're hedging our bets. Instead of going to that closer shield, one, two, three, four. Come on. Is it a no? Oh my gosh, it's an X. She went all the way over there and it's still an X. That means literally the shield two spaces away from her is the right one. And that's why I needed Cram to have some extra time. So this is what I'm going to do with Cram now. Cram is going to spend an hour to fight. We are currently fighting a buffalo. So this will be a six strength we're currently at seven, plus we have the two from Trinook, that's nine, plus one from the fire in our space, that's ten. We're at ten to a total of uh, six. And he has a total of ten health. Oh my gosh. All right, we're going to give our one single die a roll. No, we're not going to re-roll that. That's a six. So six plus seven plus uh, three, so that's sixteen. Sixteen, and we'll roll these two up. And we have a 5 or a 3, so it's going to be a 5. That means it's an 11 to a total of 16. That means we dealt him 5 damage. So he's going to go down to a 5. We'll spend another hour to do that again. We'll roll our die up, and we get a 6. Are you serious? Comparing that to, and we'll roll these up, a 1 or a 4. So we have 4 plus 6 is 10. We have 7 plus 3 is 10 plus 6 is 16. That's enough. We just took out that buffalo now normally i'd gain the strength we gain three because we're cram but i'm instead going to gain these six willpower points six plus the five that we have is 11 willpower points we need to get to 14 and i think i just made a tactical error you guys that's going to end this game this is why this game is more of a puzzle than an adventure game, because I'm going to put the uh, buffalo that I did defeat handily here, which is great, move this up to F. What I was thinking is that I could end my turn here. When I end my turn here, I would gain five additional willpower points. That would move me up past the 14. But then we would move to the G space on the track. And if I read this right, before the narrator reaches the letter G on the Legends track, one of the heroes must end their movement on the cave, thus activating a card, a hero in the cave one. So that means we just failed the scenario. <laughs> That's okay. I hope that this showed you how this game works. I love the Legends of Andor series. I think this one seems interesting enough. I have not played all the, the scenarios. Heck, this is only the second one. The first one was very basic, just like the first scenarios of the other boxes. I sometimes wish that, you know, uh, I understand why. I understand why they're coming out with... Uh, an intro scenario, and then other ones, and there'll be more online and all that jazz. But it, it uses the backside of the board, which is cool, 
but then you don't use it for any of the other quests. So I, I wish they would have more quests that use both sides of the board, or maybe during the scenario you switch to the other side. Uh, regardless, I still, I love this system. I love the challenge of puzzling it out. This is what usually happens is your first scenario you lose. Now I know the things to look for. I know to be close to this area to try and find that granddaughter so that I, you know, can see the check mark, which is right here. I can't believe that. <laughs> I couldn't, when I went all the way over there, that was an X. Oh, um, these ice tokens were actually a lot better than what I was thinking. Oh boy, are these... Okay, actually, we could have gotten a helm. So a lot of them were actually pretty good. So that's good to know. So a lot of the ice ones, it's worth hanging out at. I have no idea how we're supposed to get that one specific uh, th thorn type. I don't think there are any in here. Nope, not that I'm seeing. So the story would tell us how we can get that uh, other thorn type, the black thorn. I'm assuming that when we talk to the granddaughter, we would find out. But I'll leave that to you if you would like to explore this game. So once again, this is Legends of Andor Eternal Frost. I would say that you don't need to do this one first. If you're looking to pick up one, you can pick up the first one. It's great. I, I've actually enjoyed all three. I still have all three. That should tell you how much I enjoy the game. So now I have a fourth one. And I'm definitely going to keep this with my collection. So as always, thanks so much for watching. And I hope you'll meet us at the table for our next playthrough.